Hello, friends. Happy Thursday. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't get to you yesterday. Just day got out of hand. So we'll make the video on Thursday instead of Wednesday. I am enjoying some haunted bookshop in this uh, beautiful Boswell's Bing favorite. Uh, Boswell Bing, whatever it's called. Actually, it's called a Boswell. He doesn't call it a Bing, but you know what I mean. This is the second take because I, I've got this problem where I keep forgetting to hit record on the, uh, on the darn computer. I don't know. Anyway, the first video, it's a shame you missed it. It was a, it was a fantastic video. Uh, and in that video, I smoked the last of my, um, uh, GLP triple play. It was a gift from my friend, uh, Eric. So thank you, Eric. I enjoyed it greatly. Unfortunately, you didn't get to hear about that. So I, I you know, these Wednesday slash Thursday videos grew out of my roadway ramble series where I was just driving home, smoking a cigar and talking about whatever was on my mind. So I don't like to plan these. These are kind of rambly and I, I apologize for that. But, uh, you know, go watch something else if you don't like it. But I was thinking today about something. So this this one's a bit more formulated. Plus, I rehearsed it once with the video I didn't record. I've been thinking about pipes, and no surprise there, but the aesthetics of pipes. You, know, you look at this pipe, for example, and I think we could all agree that this pipe is pretty nice. You know, it has... It has some objective beauty to it. Now, it definitely has subjective beauty. I like it. Uh, that, that, by definition, makes it sub subjectively beautiful. Now, I may find pipes that are objectively beautiful to not be to my liking. So, for example, I tend to like straight pipes more than bent pipes. But this particular straight pipe is a bit long for me. It's a bit hard to clench. I can do it. It's gurgling for some reason. I can do it, but it's not as comfortable as my shorter billiards. So I don't smoke it as often because of that. It's not that it's bad. It's just uh, not my style. You know, some guys might like big Ben Um Pauls because they hang well from the jaw and they can, they can just stick them in their mouth and forget about them. And that's fine if that's what you like. Um, so, so there's definitely this concept of subjective beauty. You know what? This is the problem. I can't do a video with that noise. I violate everything I've ever been told about pipe smoking. And take this off while it's hot. Don't do this, do this at home, kids. I'm a professional. I'm going to be a professional at breaking pipes if I'm not careful. I think this probably was uh, reloaded a bit too quickly, which is why it's not behaving well. Because Haunted Bookshop is not a very gurgle promoting tobacco for sure. I don't know if there was some residual moisture from the uh, from the triple play. All right, we we managed to do that without snapping the tenon. Don't do that. All right. So where was I? Yeah. So what makes a pipe a good pipe? Well, you know, you've heard me say many, many times a pipe is just two holes that are connected together, surrounded by stuff, and the the engineering of those two holes is absolutely essential so you're going to get smokable pipes from dr graybo you're going to get smokable pipes from missouri meerschaum and you're going to get smokable pipes from an artisan now 
an artisan or a gray bow or a Savinelli, they're going to be more similar to one another than a Missouri Meerschaum because Missouri Meerschaum doesn't taper the airway as well. And of course, an artisan pipe is hopefully going to have more attention paid to how the airway is designed and tapered and so on. So you're going to get a, a, a qualitatively better smoking experience from an artisan pipe than a factory pipe. But that difference is not going to be huge. Okay. To somebody that's been smoking for a long time and has smoked many pipes and all that, there aren't that many pipes that just don't smoke. You know, they, they, it just they, this whole concept of, oh, this pipe's a great smoker, we say it all the time, it's overused, and it doesn't really make a lot of sense because there's not a lot that has to be right for a pipe to be a great smoker. Well, I guess I should say that there's a lot that has to be right, but if you... If, if a pipe maker, whether they be a factory or a, an artisan, doesn't get that right, they're not going to be around for very long because they're going to be really wrong. Quarter inch airway or something, that's just not going to work. So why then would I ever buy an artisan pipe when I can get a Sabinelli for a third of the price? Well. For me, it comes down to the fact that I just don't need any more pipes. You know, I, I don't. I, I have more than I can smoke now, and I'm perfectly happy with them. But I do like buying. You know, we, we all buy more than we need when it comes to pipes and tobacco. And to me, it just doesn't make sense to buy another factory pipe when I, I can save up the funds for a little bit and I can invest in an artisan pipe made by someone that I can have a relationship with, might be a friend, might be just someone that I go back and forth with a little bit on the design. It might just be someone where I see their pipe and really like it at a pipe show or something and I get to, to talk to them for a few minutes. It creates more than just a pipe, it creates a memory and it creates a connection to someone. Now this one, uh, this is a J.M. Boswell. Uh, this is actually part of a match set uh, that I had made for myself and for my friend Jack Kurtz. And when I smoke this, I think of Jack. And I hope that when he smokes his, he thinks of me. The first time I smoked this pipe was the first time I met Jack. Uh, we knew one another through uh, phone calls and things like that, but it was the first time we actually met in person. Um, this pipe has a lot of meaning for me. And... You know, beyond the fact that I think it's beautiful and that I enjoy the way it smokes. So I add value to it because of that. And the truth is, if I had a Savinelli that was purchased under the same conditions, or a you know, perfect example, the Matches Savinelli. <clears throat> that pipe means a lot more to me than any other Savinelli that I own. Sort of. <laughs> because I, I have to back up on that because I have a, I have one that my wife bought for me. I have one that a very good friend gave me. So, but but it has more meaning than any Seven I could buy now, right? So, so that's another example of that. And that value is independent of how it's made or who made it and those kinds of things. It's more about what I bring to it. So you got smoking quality. You got what you bring to the pipe. In terms of its memory, memories, and, and so on. But then there's a third thing, um, which is what I really got interested in this morning, and that's the concept of the intrinsic beauty of this thing. You know, is this obviously? I think it's beautiful, so it has subjective beauty, and I think many of you would find it to be beautiful. So you would probably say, yes, it's got subjective. But does it have objective beauty? Is that even a possible thing? What got me thinking about this was a pipe I'm working on. This is a um, John Upshaw. I don't know very much about John Upshaw. Uh, I meant to look it up, but 
didn't, uh, so I apologize. But I think this is an absolutely beautiful pipe. It's a bulldog. It's got very nice lines. I mean, you can just look at how the line runs, that, that peak down the center and how it just tapers out into the flat. Perfect. The shank is perfectly square, and those lines continue right on through the stem. It's a bulldog, but it's long for a bulldog. And that's actually surprisingly long for a bulldog. It's also very petite for a bulldog, if you let me use that word. You know, thin shank. But the bowl is proportioned to that shank. And there's just something about the, the overall symmetry and the balance and, and harmony of these parts that when I look at this, I say, this is beautiful. And I think that could be quantified in some way. You know, you could measure it in golden mean and all that stuff. But it, it, it meets all the requirements. Um, let me show you something from the other end. Well, I'd like to show you something from the other end of the spectrum, but I don't own a custom built. Just made about half my audience angry. I do own this, which is a custom built knockoff. It's a no name. Um, this is actually a pipe that I got from uh, my dear friend Danny Shore, so it means a lot to me. It is, in my opinion, objectively ugly. There's not a lot right about this pipe. The rustication is weird. It's big, it's chunky. It doesn't seem to really be doing anything here other than providing you with some grip. But then on the bottom, it looks like maybe it wanted to be a leaf or something. The top is smooth, but it's interrupted by these notches coming in around it. Uh, the shank is really thick and the, this saddle is a bit abrupt and and the bite zone is really thick and it's clunky and ugly and there's just not a lot good that i can say about this pipe i don't even really like the way it smokes although it does do a nice job with aromatic tobaccos and that's that's what i use it for i shouldn't say i don't like the way it smokes there's really not a problem with it it's just it's uncomfortable uh, because the bite zone is so thick and I could fix that. I could make another stem for it or something, but this was Danny's. I'm, I'm going to keep it the way it is. So, it's ugly. And this isn't. And that John Upshaw wasn't. I think those are objective things. I, I think that in a pipe carver or pipe repairman's mind, because sometimes the pipe repairmen have to modify the shank or the stem or make an entirely new stem uh, without an old reference. You, you know, you, you have this idea of what the proportion should be like, what should be symmetrical, um, how to harmoniously blend the, the parts together. And those things are derived from this concept of objective beauty. Now, it may or may not be apparent to the person buying the pipe, and that's okay, too. You know, if you like this, and Eric, the blue-collar pipe smoker, I'm talking to you. If you like this, that's great. You know, it's wonderful. Buy them, smoke them, enjoy them. Um... I just don't think it's beautiful, and I, I, I defy someone to tell me that it is objectively beautiful. But, you know, it's kind of like, I'm not going to tell custom-built smokers that their pipes are ugly. Well, I just did, but, you know, I'm not going to walk up to somebody and say, hey, that's an ugly pipe, unless it's Eric. Because that's kind of like walking up to somebody and saying, hey, that's an ugly baby. You, you just don't do that. But nevertheless, you think it, right? So what does this mean? Why, why am I even worried about this? Well, I've been thinking a lot about pipe shapes and, and stem shapes and how the stems match up with the pipe. I had a couple of jobs recently where I had to make stems 
without any reference and had to kind of imagine what the stem should look like. I know this is something that carvers wrestle with all the time, and a quote that I believe was from Sixteen Everson, but I could be wrong about this because I'm, I'm just remembering it, was that the job of the pipe carver is to remove all of the briar that is not a pipe and nothing more. And that last part of that is really where the, uh, the challenge comes in. How do you know when you're done? And you know what it is you're trying to achieve, but how do you know when you're done? I think that's very hard. Very hard. And I think that's part of the reason I'm not a pipe carver. That's art. And it takes, it takes an artist's eye and an artist's touch to be able to, to, uh, to understand that. And, and to achieve it, and to achieve it repeatedly. You know, when I look at art, I'm not a fan of very much modern art at all. And, you know, even going back into like the 50s, the, uh, what were they called? Abstract Impressionists, whatever, the, the Jackson Pollock type guys. I see nothing in that, that that I find beautiful or that moves me in any way. I just see splashes of paint on the wall or boxes or whatever. But I'm impressed that they could do it again and again. You know, it looks like randomness. It looks like an accident. But then you see their next work and you say, oh, I recognize that as a Jackson Pollock. And somebody could come along with you know the same color paints and everything and splash it all over the place and you'd look at it and you'd say that's not a jackson pollock because there was there was something there, there was a creative process and there was a a care put into how those those things were placed and i'm impressed by that uh, i'm impressed that that chaos could actually be reproducible i'm even more impressed when something is as tightly defined as a billiard, and I know this isn't a billiard, can be reproducible. And I think that when it is reproduced in that way where it is symmetrical, where it is proportioned properly, and where there's harmony of the parts, I, I think that that truly is a beautiful thing. So, tomorrow night, Friday, we have Pear George Jensen on the show from McBaron Tobacco. Uh, talked to him a little bit yesterday. We both agreed that we don't want to uh, don't want to delve too deeply in, in, into anything, so that we have a nice, fresh conversation. So uh, I, I'm really looking forward to getting to know him a bit better. I hope you'll join us. It's tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Eastern. Friday, every Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern is when we do the live stream. And, uh, of course, there'll be time for your questions uh, in, the, in the chat after Pear and I have a chance to, uh, to get better acquainted. So I hope you'll join us for that again tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Eastern. I look forward to seeing you there. And just a quick note on that before I sign off. Um, I do realize that tomorrow is Good Friday, and I want to apologize to any folks that observe Good Friday. I personally like to observe it, and I would not have normally scheduled the show then. I scheduled pair long before I knew that it was, and I just only recently went, oh no. Um, you know, if it was anything else, if it was just a solo live stream, I would cancel it, but I don't want to do that to him. I don't want to rejuggle his schedule again. So we're going to go forward with it. I appreciate that some of you folks may not be able to watch it live, and that's okay. Uh, the, the replay will be there for you. So, again, my apologies for that. Uh, it was unintentional. With that, guys, I'm going to uh, sign off. I will hopefully see you Friday night. If not, I'll do something on Sunday and wish you all happy Easter. Have a great Easter weekend, and uh, we'll chat soon. Take care.